What up guys, this is Kong, I'm back again for the biggest, one of the biggest movie of the year, Star Wars The Last Jedi. I was hyped, I was excited for this movie. I bought the, I bought the take it two months, maybe more prior than the movie coming out and I brought my brother and my, my, my two brothers along with me to watch this movie. Um, I gotta say guys, I was... The more I think about this movie, the more I, when I wrote all the pros and cons, I became kind of disappointed by this movie, really. Uh, just sad, kind of, kind of mad, Ash. Kind of mixture, mad, anger, disappointed, mostly disappointed. Because I thought this movie was going to be great. I thought this movie was going to be good. But let me tell you about the pros and the cons and you tell me why do you agree with me. So let's start with the pros. I love the bat, the, the space battle. It's amazing. It's great. Uh, it, it's just all. Oh, I love seeing the Dreadnought, the Star Destroyer, the flagship, and the sh um, you know the small little ship, the other fighters, and stuff like that. I really enjoy the firing cannon down on his, uh, into the into the uh, the planet. You know, I thought that was interesting. It was fun watching. Uh, I love seeing. C3PO, RDT, uh, R, R2D2, Chewie, R, uh, BB8. I uh, love seeing Layla. I love seeing School. Uh, Luke, uh, Luke, Skywalker. Love seeing Ky uh, Kylo and Rey fighting together against a uh, Praetorian in uh, Snoke uh, uh, throne room. Uh, love seeing Millennium Millennium Falcon in actions. Uh, the little cute penguin, I love them. Uh, Snow performance, his dialogue performance was great. His voice was menacing. He was uh, a good villain. In the short, the short period of time that he was in there, it was great performance. Andy Circus, you did a wonderful job. You deserve all the credits. Uh, I like seeing Carlos. Uh, Kylo's point of view of destroying the past and making a new. I like that. Like, he knows that the past is holding him down and he needs to destroy the past to create a new future. That's interesting. You get to, that's, you get to see his mentality and how he sees things and how he wants to make things happen. Uh, I love when R2-D2 play the old Princess Leia, um, request for asking for help the hologram and Mark Hamill was saying that's a cheap thought cheap shot I love that it's like a good fanfare good fan service to us I really I appreciated that um, what else I love seeing Yoda's spirit uh, before my you know uh, Luke about to burn the the sacred tree that hold all the the the, <clears throat> the Jedi lore and missions all that sort of stuff uh, the flagship destroying the uh, the cruisers. Uh, no wait, the flagship getting destroyed by the cruiser ship going speed of light. And I thought that was great. That was beautiful. It was like shocking. It was like a sh shocking awe. And I was like, oh my god, that was a that was fucking awesome. Like yes, that's one of my reaction. That was my favorite moment. My favorite action moment. Uh, what else? Uh, Luke mindfuck Kylo Ren, Kylo through the vanness of fatness, the vastness of space and time. He literally mindfuck Kylo. Kylo was just like swinging. He like, what the fuck? If this dude don't die, and he start poking. He like, oh my god, I just got play, and I like that. So I thought that was cool. Uh, there was funny joke throughout the movie. Some of them are not appropriate. Some of them was okay. Some of them was all right. My favorite would be Chewie eating one of those penguins. He roasted it, and then one of those penguin, uh, penguin light comes out, and he's like, "Oh fuck, man! You guys are making me feel guilty for killing one of your your relative." You know, I thought that was funny. And then those penguins living in uh, Chewie's uh, Millennium Falcon. I thought that was sweet and funny. I enjoyed it. Now let's get to the the con. I have a lot of con. I have a full page of cons. You know, a lot of what the fuck. You know, 
uh, for you guys. I don't know if you will agree with me or not, but I'm letting you know I have a lot. All right, so let's talk about the battles. It was just, I don't know, it's just so fucked up. It's so, it's bad writing and it's just bad writing. The plot is just, there's plot holes and it's just stupid as shit, you know. Uh, so Rose and Finn take a side adventure and it really stopped the movie. They go to this rich ass planet. It's like, what the fuck? I don't care about no, no rich ass planet, gambling planet. I don't give a shit about that shit. I don't. And it's like, it really holds the movie back. It really does. And it's like, because they got to find this code breaker. It's like, it's a stupid plot. It's a stupid driving force for the movie. It's just stupid. And like Rose falling in love with Finn, it just feels fake. So like 12 hours and she fell in love with him. It's just, it's just fake. It's just dumb. It just doesn't help the movie at all. Doesn't, you know, it's like, what the fuck, you know? The dragon, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest, what the fuck is the dreadnought and the flagship, the Snoke's flagship. Had no motherfucking shield. I'm like, what the fuck? Why you not have shield? If it were me, I'd like put the motherfucking shield on so we don't get fucked up by the re rebels or the, re the resistance. And, and the thing is that at the beginning, Poe take out uh, uh, several of those uh, 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 cannon. I'm like, this is the motherfucking dreadnoughts. It should have thousands, not thousands, but hundreds of a blaster or cannon going off. It should be like going off like crazy. But no. Like, what the fuck? I just don't get it. Like, why do you do that? You know, what's going on with you writers out there? What's going on with the directors? It's like, I don't get it. Why would the first order not put the the shield on? Why did they not shoot all the cannon they got at the rebels or the resistance? They don't even send all their uh, fighter fighter after them. I'm just like, what the fuck? If it were me, I like all y'all. Get on the fucking star uh, fighter, go after them, you know. It's like I don't get it. Like what the fuck? It's like these first order are not smart, or it's they're not written smart. That is the key, you know. And they have fighting a resistance for years. You think that these people have tactician or tactician experience or tactic experience to fight the rebels? To fight this is the military fight. They don't know how to utilize the resource that they have. It's just, what the fuck, you know? Okay, moving on. Uh, so, so the main ship, I got the flagship is fine, Cannon. Fine. And, and you think that at some point, the cruiser's shield would go down. But it doesn't. Like, what the fuck? It should go down. You know, I think I believe in other other uh, Star Wars uh, movies, the shield go down, and even in the Star Wars show, like Tactic the Clone or or uh, Star Star Wars Rebel, the shield goes down. You lose shield, but they never address that in the motherfucking movies. The shield is on for the whole time of the movie. Like what the hell? I don't get it. The writer wasn't thinking. The director wasn't thinking of really thinking about the details, the cause and reaction of the pro uh, of the antagonist and the protagonist, their action. They didn't think. They just went forward with it. What a shame. So let's talk about what the point of the code breaker if the motherfuckers is gonna betray them anyway, and and then they. And they even destroy the uh, the ship, the flagship. It's like, what's the point in going on a sidetrack mission when they uh, they you the the cruiser 
go uh, light speed destroy uh, destroy the the flagship. It's just what the fuck. Okay, so let's go on. Ray got no training from uh, Luke. Kylo got no training from Snoke. What the fuck? Luke is not Luke. When I say that, it's mean. Luke doesn't go out his way to save uh, Leia. I mean, he does astral projectionly. Doesn't go out his way to save Ray. Doesn't go out his way to save uh, Kylo or attempt to save Kylo. None of that. His behavior is really the to, to, to total opposite of the original, uh, or the Luke that we known in the past. So it, it's just stupid. It's not Luke. It's a different Luke. If you get what I'm saying. So moving on. What the point of the watering hole and the black mirror or the mirror? I didn't get it. She kind of ray falls down and she look, look in the mirror and then that was it. it was, she started doing snapping things and she looking around and was like, what the fuck? Okay, so le let's talk about Leo got ejected the fuck out of the bridges. All right, before that, before. Kylo and his two escort goes in, they start blasting, you know, destroying sh shit around. And Kylo was gonna shoot it, but he knows that he has his mother, he can't do it. Then the two escorts shoot it, and then Leia got ejected fuck out of the bridge, okay? Like, like the whole, it like decimated the, the bridge. Like, everybody's like gone out into space. Everybody dies, but except her. She's frozen, she's like, she's floating, and then she uses a force and she comes back to the cruisers. And it's just like, what the fuck? Then doesn't the... Uh... Okay, what, how does she breathe? And like, yes, I understand she has some force knowledge, but she doesn't have any formal training I would say not that I know of don't quote me I am not a star fanatic okay so slowly roll there guys and that whole scene just felt more like a fuck you in your face to me you know like Disney saying fuck you we don't give a shit about you uh, to me and it, it feel like an insult to Carrie Fisher's passing in her family. It's like it's like they want to use her to make more money in, in the next episode. It's like she passed away. I'm really sad that she passed away. Why didn't they just let her die in this heroic passing? And let it be. But they don't. They bring her back. It's like the fuck, you know? It's just a big ass fuck you. That's what that's what it really is. Snow got killed and chopped in half by Kylo Ren. What the fuck? So this dude is the strongest motherfucker in the entire galaxy, other than Luke Skywalker. So he's reading their mind, both of their mind. He even stated out loud. He know what they're thinking, but yet he doesn't know that the motherfucking Ray, the, the lightsaber is twitching. How can you not know if you're so in tune with the dark side and all the environment that you not know that it was like, okay, this shit is standing. He could have just killed them both and be done and be the true, be the truly supreme leader that he is. He doesn't. So it's like, that is just ruined it for me. It's like, I was hoping that Supreme Leader Snow could be the badass, almost equal to uh, Darth Vader or uh, uh, the Emperor. I wish he was, I was hoping that he would be that badass or that evil, that cruelness. But he's dead. Chop in half. The end of the story. You wasted his characters. You wasted uh, Andy Serkis' performances. 
Another fuck you in the face. Okay, we're moving on, guys. Why can't the flash ship or other ship fire to the resistance final uh, hiding spot? I don't get it. Why did you send out five AT and T when you can bombard them or ship other, or send other ship down there? I don't get it. It's like. It's not smart. These characters are not written smart. They're not. They're not written smart in a smart way. Like, why would you send five AT AT? I would send a whole motherfucking army after these guys. Not armies, but like, I would send everybody just to cut them off. It's just dumb. Captain Phasma's death is wasted. Truly wasted. Wish she had more. See, I wish she, uh, Captain Phasma had more role, more, more, uh, more screen time. But no, the little fight sequence, and then she, then punch in the face, kicked her down to the the fiery pit. She dies. What the point in bringing her back if you kill her in the second time? What the fuck? Okay. Luke Sky, Luke Skywalker's death is weak, pathetic. Not memorable. It's just weak. He passed away. Boring. I don't, I'm not going to remember that. I'm going to remember that it's being weak. Yes. Okay. So it's just... Alright. So Finn sa sacrificing his life to, uh, I guess, destroy this kinetic... A uh, being a uh, cannon. And the role saved his life. What the fuck? The reason I say that is that this moment, I was like, okay, you know, Finn is gonna sacrifice his life, be a true hero he really is, give the other the opportunity to live, to fight for another a few more minutes, uh, 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 maybe a few hours, not a few minutes, but no, Rose come and save him. Like, what the fuck? And the most thing is like, okay, you have the 5AT-AT looking out and they did not shoot them. How can you not shoot them? The resistance. The two there, I'll be shooting those two guys, but no, they did not. They were not written smart. The scripts, the characters. Okay. So the thing is that when, they, when Ray and Ky, uh, Kylo finish out the Praetorian and then they were fighting and they were struggling for the, the lightsaber and they split so then then the next at the fight I guess I guess on this moon or this this blow planet how the hell did Rey get off the uh, flagship how the fuck she even do that among thousands of stormtroopers I don't get it I truly don't get it. And how the fuck she get out of there? Like, not just getting out, but how does she get out of there to a ship and then go to the Millennium Falcon? I don't get it. That's just like, it was just dismissed. It was thrown out. It was like ripped out and say, throw this shit in the trash. I just didn't get it. Like, how the fuck did she went from being the the flight ship and then on the Millennium Falcon, I just didn't get it. It's just like, what the fuck? What happened here? Okay, so why didn't the interim general tell Poe say, "Hey, this is what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna go. I we're gonna have everybody uh, aboard ship, uh, and I'm gonna set this uh, cruiser on." Um, uh, Auto, uh, autopilot, and I'm gonna have us go light speed and destroy this, destroy it so we can survive. Why didn't she tell him that? It's just, I don't get it. It was written bad. I know that. It's like, why didn't they do it? It's just, it hurt, it hurt my head. Okay, so then, on the island where Luke is at, we see the X Wing, 
the motherfucking X-Wing in the water. But no, Luke did not ride the X-Wing like he knows. And then he chose to be on the, the edge of the, of the cliff. My fuck Kylo Ren from the vast of space and time. And not become a murderer for the resistance, for the rebel, for the galaxy. No, he did not ride in that his famous or his personal X-Wing. Pulled it out like how he did in, the, in years before. Did not. Why the fuck would you show the X-Wing if you don't use the X-Wing? What the fuck? Ray's lineage or family lineage is shit. Jack shit. Junkers. Nothing. Not out. Nothing. Not important at all. It make her less important. It make her not significant. Why should I care about Rey if she's not important? Why should I? Okay. So at the uh, the final resistance uh, hideout. So they go through this maze and then there's rock and then Rey is on the other end of the rebel and she's magically, magically, without training, she was able to like blow all these rocks. What the fuck? You had no training in the art of the force. I don't get it. What the fuck? How she even pull it off? Yes, she can feel it, but how does she even do it? How does she become that powerful? I don't get it. So also another thing is like, how could Kylo not tell that Rey is in the motherfucking Millennium Falcon? How could he not know that she is on the other end of that mountain range? How could he not know? How could he not feel her? He had, he had the force within him. He's in tune with the force, but he can't tell? Just like Snow can't tell the lightsaber about to chop his body in half? But no, I don't get it. What the fuck? So this movie is, the more I talk about it, the more I become, I become angry. The more I become pissed off. The more I just, I'm disappointed in this movie. In the writer, in the directors, in the stories. It's just, I don't really have faith <laughs> in the, the upcoming movies because of this shit mess that Ryan Johnson and the writer made. It just, it feel, it feel like a mess. It doesn't hold together. Uh, like uh, when you weave, uh, uh, when you weave a, a sweater together, this is like they, they didn't weave the, 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 the sweater together. They didn't. They did part of it and then they went to another part and did it. it was, they didn't think it through. The director and the writer did not think the story through. The cause and effect. They didn't think about how they can make it memorable. How can they can make it impactful. How could they make uh, us remember this movie. How could they make it uh, a legacy movie. Uh, how could they make it uh, a great movie. You know. Uh, how could they, you know, make a movie that we're going to be remember like the, the, uh, the, the, the sequel movies? We don't. And that is the problem with this. There's a lot of problem with this movies. And I was really excited for this movie. I really truly was. I was excited. I was a hype. I thought we were going to get to see... Um, a lot of action, a lot of sword fighting. And also, I want to point out, the sword play in this movie is shit. Shit. I thought the secret prequel was better. And here there isn't no, any real fight, it was just brawling and shit, you know. Because they did not get any formal training. That's the issue. So, 
on that final note, guys, I want to give this movie a 5 out of 10. Again, a 5 out of 10. I say if you go watch it if you have the time. You will enjoy it. You will not enjoy it. You will be pissed off after you realize all the plot holes after you left the, the theater. You will be pissed off and you will have moment of what the fuck. There is a lot of what the fuck in this movie. Uh, so I just want to warn you ahead of time. You will say what the fuck a lot. Again guys, it's a 5 out of 10. I'm sorely disappointed in this director and the writers. I really am. I thought this was going to be a great movie, but it is not a great movie. Not a great Star Wars movie at all. The more I think about it. So again guys, I want to thank you so much for your time and effort to watching my movie trailer, my, my movie review of Star Wars The Last Jedi. Most importantly, please like, thumbs up, share, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and browse my channel, guys. There's a lot of content on there for you to check out. There's a lot. So please, check it out. Anyway, thank you so much. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.